I've been working on a multiplayer first person sword combat game for a while now. We tackled the multiplayer part of that back in November, the first person part of that in December and January, and now we need to handle the sword combat part of that. Really quick, let me introduce myself. Hi, I'm Frank, I make games. I've been working on the aforementioned multiplayer first person sword combat project. I'm calling it Castle Wars, at least until a better name pops up into my head. Before we get into combat systems, I do want to shout out my stream. I stream on YouTube and on my Twitch page, which is at WikiNHN. I stream Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays from about 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific time if you've been watching the streams then a good bit of this is going to be familiar i apologize but there's there's some new stuff in here so don't check out just yet i've been putting stream clips on this channel under the shorts page as well as on tiktok and on instagram and they've been kind of doing numbers at least compared to what i usually get lastly there is so much to talk about with these combat systems that i actually need to split this into two videos Half because there's so much and half because some of the work isn't done yet. So the second part will be out next week. And with that all out of the way, let's finally get into this. In case you didn't see it or you forgot, I restarted this project back in October after briefly dancing with the devil, you know, the Unreal Engine. I restarted for a lot of reasons, but one of the big ones was that I wanted to change the core combat loop. Originally, there was blocking and three possible attacks for each sword. When I prototyped this in Unreal, there were three mechanics. There was a package that I got and it had sword swinging, shield blocking, and kicking. I had so much fun playing around with <laughs> kicking that I just wanted to steal that mechanic. This would enable us to have a three-part combat loop, which I'm dubbing the Holy Trinity. So we have swinging that puts damage out, blocking that prevents incoming damage, and kicking that pushes players back. And you're only gonna be able to do one of these actions at a time. The first Halo had a three-part combat loop with guns, melee, and grenades. And I already take so much inspiration from Bungie's games that so this kind of just makes sense. Plus, I think this is enough to get us started on developing our actual gameplay. We need to get some boring stuff out of the way first. We need a way of storing all of the data for each sword, so stuff like damage values, ranges, attack lengths, weapon sway information, what decals to use if we hit a surface, all that stuff. What I've decided on is that a sword is going to have a weapon component, and this weapon component holds references to two scriptable objects, a weapon data object and a weapon sway data object. Data is kind of boring, but you know what's not? Filing your taxes. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, there's no sponsor. I'm talking about animation. Way back in the last prototype, I made a few sword swing animations for each sword in that prototype, and so I rigged the new system to just patch in and use those animations. Right now, if you attack, it chooses a random attack data and plays the animation associated with that attack. And I'm leaving this somewhat simple for now because in the next video, we're gonna develop sword combos. So let's introduce you all to the swords. I took all five from the last prototype and they follow the naming scheme of something dash type. We have the D-type, D stands for default, but it's a broadsword, not gonna get into that. K-type, which is a katana. The G-type, which is a glaive, very similar to the one in Destiny 2. The E-type, which is one half of an energy sword model. I'm probably gonna need to change this later down the line to avoid some significant copyright issues. My current favorites are the G and the E-type, but I don't dislike any of them. These are just the two that I feel like have been tweaked the best so far and feel the best to use. All right, it's time to detect some hits and do damage. In the last prototype, the hit detection was handled originally by tracking where the sword swung and checking if that had collided with anything. Then it was just a synced animation controlling a box. So this box would just move wherever the sword went. Again, checking for collisions. This time around, I'm making a system that has a trigger region in front of the player's camera, which is as long as the range specified in the weapon data. This trigger region is only activated for a duration during the attack animation. If the trigger region collides with a health object, it'll add it to a list of hit things, and then it'll apply damage to it via the health system that we built last time. So the hit detection is actually super simple this time around, and honestly, we're building an arcade game, so simple is good. Okay, so now we have sword swinging and hit detection works. I think it's time to handle syncing up these animations over the network, which you think that'd be hard. You think that would take a lot of time? Nope. Fishnet, the network library that I've been using, provides a networked animator component. And you can just put this on an object that's spawned and has a normal Unity animator component and you're good. Honestly, they made this way too easy. What was harder was setting up first and third person models for each sword. Since I have different scaling, for the first and, and third person models so that the weapons look normal in first person and in third person, we have to have separate models and these get drawn or hidden depending on which camera is rendering in the render stack. But what if I don't wanna take damage? Like I wanna be able to damage other people, but I don't want them to be able to damage me. 
In order to do this, we're gonna need to implement blocking. The way blocking worked last time is that we intercepted every call to our health component and then checked if we, the player, were blocking. This isn't gonna work anymore since our changes to our health values are only actually being called on the server and then being replicated to everyone else so we can't check them on our own instance. What I came up with, and what's probably gonna need to be changed in the future, is that the player attacking checks the player that they're hitting and checks if they're blocking or not. And then the damage value that they send to the server gets changed based on if that other player is blocking. And this is probably gonna be problematic later, since the damage logic is not actually being sent to the server for verification. We could potentially have an issue where someone just goes, yeah, actually, they're not blocking and do the full amount of damage. So I'm gonna keep an eye on this and we'll check back later if I think it needs to be changed. Even more problematic is the way that I'm checking if players are blocking, which is checking the state of their networked animators. If the player is in a blocking animation state, then they are blocking. This means that we don't have to sync any additional information over the network, but I do feel weird using an animation component to track an input state. All right, weapon sway. This is something I spent a good bit of time on during the last prototype. I don't really have any notes on its implementation. It was one of the last things I worked on and it still feels good enough for me. So I'm just gonna copy paste it here. It works by keeping track of various input vectors, things like our movement, if we're jumping, our look vector, if we're running or walking, etc. And we'll compile all of these input vectors into an offset vector that we can then apply to our weapon model. I also implemented signals for dashing, sliding, if we blocked an attack, if we kicked someone, or if we got kicked by someone that will be compiled into this offset vector. I'll talk more about kicking in the next video. Here's the weapon sway working. I think it turned out good enough for now. Obviously it's gonna require tweaking later, but what won't? Another thing we're gonna need the ability to do is swap weapons, and therefore we're gonna need to be able to drop weapons. I wrote a function to drop the sword that we're currently holding, as well as a function that picks up a sword via the interaction system. If you're holding a sword and you pick up another, you'll automatically drop the sword you're currently holding. You can also press a key to drop the sword that you're currently holding. The, the defaults are gonna be Q on the keyboard and the right stick press on a controller. Lastly, if the player dies, they will drop the sword that they're holding. I think that one makes sense. And this means that we can technically make a pile of swords on the kill plane at the bottom of a map. So last for today is sheathing. And this is gonna be a very quick section because honestly, it's not too complex but it is necessary. If the player starts climbing a ladder or swimming, they'll sheath their sword. This looks great in first person, but if you pull back into third person, you can see that the arms are just hidden from first person view. So for our third person model, we're actually gonna need to hide it. That way we don't have a bunch of players swimming in a pool, grossly holding swords behind their eyes. All right, that's all I have for this video. In the next video, I'm gonna cover kicking, sword combos, lunging slash lock on, camera shake, hit numbers, friendly fire, surface hit decals, UI, and do some balancing. Get subscribed if you haven't already, like the video if you want more of these, catch the streams if you wanna ask me questions about my game in real time, and if you want me to really never leave your YouTube front page, go and find a short and like it. I'll be there forever. All right, you've been amazing. I've been Frank. I'll see you later.